19 different medications that I was taking every single day. A pill popper gets a taste of his own medicine. I am dying. There is nothing that can be done about it. Plus, have faith in God. Harness the power of miracles. Nothing will be impossible to you. Using the laws of the secret kingdom on today's 700 Club. Command the mountain to move. Command the disease to leave. Command, speak in the name of Jesus. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. There was a song a few years ago, Baby, It's Cold Outside. Well, baby, it's hot outside now. But 3,000 cities have hit records. They're talking about 1870 and 1880 and 90. Uh, unbelievably, day after day after day, record uh, temperatures, a whole month of 100 days right in a row in some areas. I mean, it's just unbelievable. It really is. And it's, you know, it's mm. hard, of course, on the electric grid in the yeah. country, but harder on the farmers. My goodness. Well, I mean, I many was, of I was them reading are just they, they, they have horses, and the horses are so thirsty. They're drinking them all, all their water. Their water bills are and going cattle, up. cattle, the same Cattle, you know, mm -hmm. it's going to be tough. And down in Texas, they suffer. But it's not just Texas. It's all the East Coast. Records in, in places like Philadelphia, New York, Washington, uh, all very hot. Exactly. Everybody's of course, I've been from... up on the mountains of Virginia. It was cool and pleasant. Yeah. and well, the we're air all coming up there. Please. <laughs> You're all, That's the good all news. welcomed. <laughs> And uh, join my popular dog, Blue, who now has almost 3,000 Facebook, his last appearance on the Probably show. Probably take him up there to get him away from the crowds, right? Well, he was up there, and there were two dogs he was playing with, and he ran and ran and ran and ran and ran. I think he's glad to get home and get a little rest. <laughs> well, we're glad he's home. But anyhow, whew, as to nobody's surprise, the leaders in Washington say they finally reached the deal on the debt ceiling. And they're trying to get their members to support it in both the House and the Senate. Well, the White House and Congress want to keep the United States government operating without missing any payments to anyone. But as John Jessup reports, not everyone is on board with the deal. It was the sigh heard round the world. Relief that Washington could come together to avoid a warning many had been predicting, a financial unknown. I want to announce that the leaders of both parties in both chambers have reached an agreement that will reduce the deficit and avoid default. But now comes the tough part. Pretty pleased with this, right? <laughs> Selling the plan to skeptics on both sides of the aisle. But both parties gave more ground than they wanted to, and neither side got as much as it had hoped. But that is the essence of compromise. The deal increases the debt ceiling in phases by $2.4 trillion through the 2012 elections. But it also immediately cuts spending by about a trillion dollars and requires a special joint congressional committee to find another $1.5 trillion in savings by November. If Congress can't agree to those savings, then automatic across-the-board spending cuts kick in, targeting Medicare and the Department of Defense. Steep defense cuts may keep some conservatives from backing the agreement, along with the fact that a balanced budget amendment is no longer required. And on the other side, some progressives feel the spending cuts on entitlements go too far. Emmanuel Cleaver, the chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus, called it a sugar-coated Satan sandwich. The deal doesn't raise taxes, but opponents worry that a bipartisan committee could bring them back to the table, something the White House already alluded to. And what that's going to work on is the items that the president was focused on with Speaker Boehner. You're not going to reduce the deficit without tax reform, without entitlements. But for now, some conservatives believe they can claim victory because they shifted the conversation and culture of Washington from spending to cutting. I think we've made dramatic progress in that direction since April, for example, when the administration glory was asking us to raise the debt ceiling with no spending reductions at all, nothing, just a clean debt ceiling. One segment that liked the news, the financial sector. The markets rebounded after the announcement, but credit ratings agencies still say there's no guarantee the U.S.'s AAA credit rating will remain intact. And other serious problems lie ahead for President Obama and the Congress, like an already weak economy that's growing at less than 1% so far this year, and unemployment above 9%. John Jessup, CBN News, Washington. Well, businesses are faced with an unbelievable maze of federal regulations. The federal agencies are going crazy, putting more and more job-killing regulations on business. And 
needless to say, the corporate income tax is about the highest in the world here in the United States. And then you add, I was talking to a, a young entrepreneur there two ago, talking about uh, Sarbanes-Oxley. And I've known all along that, that that law is absolutely a job killer. And uh, a, a young entrepreneur would have to be slightly uh, off to, to bring forth an IPO here in the American markets. It's so much better to go into London or go into Hong Kong or to go someplace else to, to list your shares because it is so complicated and very, very costly. Congress it just doesn't understand what they do. And then these federal agencies, all they care about is regulations. They don't care about the, the, the ultimate uh, benefit. I mean, the, the, uh, I shouldn't say the victim of their, of their regulations. What they, they're, they're just focused on regulation and focused on getting their power extended. And <clears throat> so we're not going to have a job growth and a job recovery until we get rid of those regulations. And this bill doesn't do anything, in my opinion, except kick the can down the road. It's one more time <clears throat> where Congress says, well, we can't deal with it right now. We've got to take a little longer. So we'll have a commission. Well, they had a commission. They've had a number of commissions. They ignore these commissions. They claim that this commission is going to do something. But when it's all said and done, it'll be $3 trillion in cuts. And the rating agencies wanted at least four. And if you look at uh, Congressman Ryan's proposal, it was seven or eight. So you, you need something much, much larger in order to get out of the hole we're in. So this is, well, people say, well, they made a deal. Well, I, I'm not sure that that's what everybody wants, but uh, we'll see. It wasn't quite a deal as much as a Band-Aid for the moment, do you think? That's really what it was, but they acted like they had a deal yeah. late. I mean, they should have done this, you know, a few months ago. But the Senate, you know, Harry Reid writes up a last-minute piece of legislation, puts it out, and his own members voted it down. They sent it yeah. for it. Didn't, and then they come back and change it. And so, and everybody says, well, we won. So each side can go away claiming victory, which is what they want. But the big thing the White House wanted was not to bring this up again for the election. Mm -hmm. And so it won't be on the table. It's, it's been uh, extended past the election. And that's what the Democrats wanted. So the Republicans can come and say. It'll be in the debates, though. Yeah, the debates. OK. Well, Wendy Griffith, <laughs> Wendy, it's good to see you. <laughs> It's great, great to see you, Pat. Thank you so much. Well, a rally in Egypt Friday was supposed to show political unity among various groups. Instead, hardline Islamists showed their strength. Tens of thousands of Egyptians gathered in Cairo's to rear square seeking political freedom. Egyptians from the Liberal Party were there to support a measure that would set guidelines for a new constitution and limit what they fear is a growing Islamist influence. But by the end of the day, the Islamist demonstrators had taken over, chanting slogans like Allah is great and Islamic Islamic, not socialist, not communist. The American Center for Law and Justice is demanding the city of New York allow a Christian group to show a documentary about the Ground Zero Mosque. The Christian Action Network wants to use city parks to show sacrifice survivors, the untold story of the Ground Zero Mosque. But the Parks Department would not allow it. The ACLJ says that's a violation of the First Amendment. It advised the department to reconsider or face legal action. Well, as Pat mentioned at the top of the show, get ready for more hot weather this month. Meteorologists say that August is expected to pick up where July left off. High temperatures in cities across the U.S. broke or tied more than 2,000 records. Imagine that. 18 states from North Dakota to Texas have heat advisories. Texas is experiencing its worst drought ever recorded. And they're hoping that hurricane season will bring some much needed rain and relief their way. New temperature data from NASA and another possible scandal have blown fresh holes into the theory of global warming. Dale Hurd has that story. New NASA satellite data from the last 11 years shows the Earth's atmosphere is allowing a lot more heat to escape into space than computer models had predicted. The study in the peer-reviewed journal Remote Sensing means much less greenhouse gases are trapped in the upper atmosphere and that global warming is not a problem. It's no surprise to global warming skeptics like Joseph DeLeo, the first director of meteorology at the Weather Channel. He says the methodology used for showing the Earth is warming has been shoddy and unscientific. Uh, the temperature records are, are uh, contaminated, unfortunately, especially with regards to the station. 
uh, siting of the stations are very important and they find that 90% of the stations are poorly sited. Uh, that don't meet government standards and they all have warm biases. The world has been subjected to a barrage of scary warnings about an impending climate apocalypse. Please help the world. Rising sea levels, drowning polar bears. But one of the scientists who first reported that polar bears were at risk from climate change, Charles Manette, is reportedly being investigated for professional misconduct in relation to that very article. If true, it would be yet another climate scandal for a science that has already lost a lot of its credibility with many Americans. I'm not convinced that there are that many scientists who view this as this apocalyptic end of the world issue, but that gets a lot of coverage. If I tell you the world's going to come to an end, I'll get on TV. If I tell you that it's not, I probably won't. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Well, Pat, is this a surprise? Not really. But you know, when I, I was trying to think today, how come we, if things are so hot? And um, I believe uh, we have punched a hole through the ozone layers at the poles. I, I think the rays of the sun are coming in more uh, hot uh, than they have more directly. Because I, I know in my own case that uh, sitting a little bit in the sun, I'm suddenly getting uh, you know, a terrible burn, whereas mm -hmm. days gone by, it didn't affect me. Have you have reacted that yeah, way. I, I yeah, I really believe that. And they, they say there's a hole in the ozone layer out there, by the, at least by the South Pole. Um, so that would enable the sun's rays to come through a little bit. We're not as protected. But somebody's got to come up with an answer, and I don't know what the answer is, but <laughs> it's powerful hot. And there's no two ways about it. July has set, as, as she said, over 2,000 uh, records uh, well, in this month. And it's not month. just the heat this summer. You know, our weather patterns have just been bizarre lately I, <clears throat> in many ways, in many seasons. So tornadoes, we're well, coming into the hurricane in season. In strange areas. It's very strange, very strange. Mm -hmm. But the tornado threat is is incredible. And, and you know, what happened down in Alabama, what's happened out in Joplin, Missouri, what's happened in these various other cities, it's frightening. And um, obviously, something going on in our, in our society, in our world, uh, maybe it's sunspots, maybe it's the sun uh, uh, having a, a little heyday with us, but that's where it's going to come from. It'll come more from the sun and from uh, than us driving old Chevrolets. <laughs> Terry. Well, up next, have you noticed you're leaning more to the left? Well, there's a reason for that. See how a scientific study shows that bias in the media may be distorting your mind. This is the information retailers don't want you to know, especially now. They don't want you to learn just how much money you've been giving away to retail markups on items you purchase for your home. All because you don't know how to buy like the insiders do at Direct Buy Club, the home improvement and furnishings club with direct insider prices. When you go to Direct Buy, you know that things are going to be a lot less than retail and um, you don't have to worry about sales. It's just, you know, one price and it's a low price too. I would shop around and, and, and investigate uh, and without a shadow of a doubt, Direct Buy would have the lowest price. Members buy top quality name brand merchandise from hundreds and hundreds of trusted manufacturers. So call the number on your screen now and we'll rush you your free visitor's pass to your local Direct Buy Club and your certificate for a free 30-day membership. This is a limited offer, so call now. Her story touched us. When can I serve again? Her comeback inspired us. I don't need easy, I just need possible and showed us what it takes to be a true champion. Soul Surfer on Blu-ray Combo Pack, August 2nd. Tomorrow... That was always rejected. His father didn't want him and his gang forgot him. Everything they ever talk about is a lie. It's not true. A felon finds freedom behind bars. I said, man, where do I sign my name? Plus, former governor and presidential hopeful Mike Huckabee and the day that changed America forever. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. Well, for decades, academic studies have shown that the news media uh, are well to the left of the American public. But now a new study shows that the liberal bias of the media has also moved American voters more to the left. It's no secret that the news media leans to the left. 
But new scientific analysis suggests that when people are exposed to news with a liberal slant, they adopt more liberal views as a result. In Left Turn, How Liberal Media Bias Distorts the American Mind, UCLA political scientist Tim Grossclose shows that the average American's political quotient, as he terms it, has shifted to the left by about 20 points, all because of the influence of the liberal media. Among his findings, all mainstream news outlets in the United States have a liberal bias. The Drudge Report is the most fair, balanced, and centrist news outlet in the country. And the Fox News program's special report, which is usually characterized as conservative, is not biased as far right as typical mainstream outlets are biased to the left. Well, our producer, Drew Parkhill, is just entranced by this book called Left Turn. Tim Grossclose, how liberal media has distorted the American mind. He's a professor, a distinguished professor at UCLA and in other uh, leading institutions. And Tim, congr congratulations on the book and welcome. Thank you very much. It's an honor. How do you uh, define liberal and how do you determine that, that the media is liberal and that people are listening to them? Okay, uh, good question. Uh, okay. I, I, I construct something that I call a political quotient. Okay. Or I call it a PQ. This is uh, just a number of questions. Uh, in fact, I saw just on the CBN website, it's already up, my, my 10 question quiz. Everyone okay. can compute their own PQ. Uh, by the way, higher scores mean liberal. Uh, these are all based on a liberal interest group called the Americans for Democratic Action. So I let them pick my questions for me, and they decide which side is liberal. So I'm letting a liberal interest group decide what liberal means. So the ADA does that? That's right. right. That's right. Okay. So I use their, yeah, I use their questions. And mm -hmm. when it was all finished, what, I mean, give us an example. Let's say you're watching CBS News or, or ABC. What is it they do that uh, you would mark as a high PQ? Uh, it's all acts of uh, acts of omission, not commission. Okay. So, I, I, in, in my view, uh, in my research, I find very few false statements, either from the left or the right uh, of right. media outlets. But it's things that they don't report. Different studies, like the Van Jones uh, story that the, the media, uh, mainstream media just uh, largely ignored. And uh, another thing that I do, a lot of times, they don't interview experts from the right to give the perspective. And so that's one way I actually quantify the media bias by looking to see which experts remember, they quote. Uh, I, we subscribed to AP and I was just absolutely shocked. That over in Lebanon, they always call the Christians the right wing phalange. Oh, and I right. said, why don't you call these other guys left wing? But well, that's right. Do. And that's another way I look at the, the language that they use. So, for instance, do you call it the death tax or the estate tax? There's just a number of <laughs> uh, right. things uh, that people use that you can use to judge the, the bias of well, the media. What your studies have shown is that this bias is actually influencing people. It, it, and, and I'm sure the people, the media would love to think that they influence people. And right. we, we'd begun to think Americans were a little bit more independent, but they're not. That's right. Tell yeah. Us. So uh, it's in the last part of my book, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. People are focusing on the other part. But there's a number of academic studies uh, not done by me, things that I review, uh, all sort of like experiments. And for instance, uh, a group of these Yale researchers went into the northern Virginia, Washington, D.C. suburbs, mm -hmm. called up people, got a random sample, and then uh, just before calling them up, they would metaphorically flip a coin. And if it's heads, they say, we'll give you a subscription to the Washington Post. Tails will give you a subscription to the Washington Times. The idea is Post is more right. liberal than the Times. And then after two months, they called them up and said, who'd you vote for in the last election? And indeed, the Post subscribing subjects indeed voted more liberally than the, the Times subscribing subjects. And I, I use that result plus some others to try to estimate the effect that the media has shifted well, us. Is, is that Self-selection, in other words, would the, would the people select the Washington Post who were already liberal, or do you think the Post... They didn't get... That was the great thing. This was an experiment. So uh -huh. they said the, the coin flip decided whether they got the Post or the Times. Okay, so they hadn't subscribed yet. That's right. Yeah, these okay. were all people, yeah, who hadn't right. subscribed, yeah. Um, and so if, if I can't, I backtrack out and say, like, how much has it shifted us? And uh, by my political quotient scale, mm -hmm. about 20 or 25 points. Incredible which is about the difference between an average kind of purple state voter like Iowa or Wisconsin and the average pretty darn red state voter like Texas or Kentucky. Well, what do you think this is going to do? We've had this debate. I don't think American people really quite know what to do with all this uh, 
matter of uh, extending the debt limit. It's, it's beyond the average voter. How do you think this is going to play out in the next election? They got an election for Congress and an election for president. You know, I'm, I'm still studying up on this, but I, I think the Republicans at least want to get a vote on some of these things. That's part of this deal. They'll get a vote on the balanced budget yeah. amendment. And I think Republicans have to kind of react to the liberal media. And if they can do something like, say, here's uh, something tried and true that we can see, like a vote in Congress, and, and it's hard to distort that. Well, you know, you also mentioned the fact that the Drudge Report is quite conservative. Is that, am I characterizing it right? Right, yeah. Actually, if, if anything, this was one of the surprises. Uh, uh, I looked at this, I found the Drudge Report had a slant quotient, which of uh, about mm -hmm. 60, which means it's just a teeny bit left of center. Oh, all right. Yeah, so now I, I should mention that w the data for my Drudge Report are mainly the articles to which he links. Mm -hmm. Very little of it was his own stories. But um, just judging by that, he, he was slightly left of center, but very, very close to, to being you, perfectly centrist. The amazing thing you found at the Wall Street Journal prior to Murdoch was... Uh, more liberal, maybe, than the New York Times. Uh, yes, I, I should qualify that. The, the data did not include any of the op-eds. Yeah. That was all news. But, uh, yeah, that was a little bit surprising. They were an 85 on this well, land quotient. It didn't quotient. surprise me because I'm a I have a reader of the Wall Street yeah, Journal. A number of people have been saying that. I love the editorials. And I, I wouldn't even read the news. Yeah. I knew there was a People slanted. were telling me that. I said, you are revealing the best kept secret out there. I guess you already knew the secret. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wouldn't have thought it was more liberal than the New York Times. Yeah, well, just slightly. Just slightly. Well, but do, you, do you think, I mean, uh, is the electorate like a bunch of sheep? They just you know, get led by these? You know, that people. was a surprising result. I, I tried to come up with, like, what are the factors that influence our political views? And I made it a weighted average of our own natural views and what the media tells us. And by my estimates, it was actually more weight was what the media tells us than mm -hmm. on what our natural views would be. Well, you, you know, I, I looked at that list of all those various pieces of legislation, and most people don't have a clue. I was one of them. I don't have a clue about all these things. Oh, right. You know, you, you just aren't uh, right. informed on it. So right. how can you make an informed decision? But people do it. They, they talk about these things. Right. I hope, if anything, that people can use my slant quotients to try to get a balanced set of views. So if you read the New York Times, that has mm -hmm. a slant quotient of about 74. You should look for a, another news outlet that would have a, a slant quotient of about 26, and mm -hmm. the average would be about a 50. By the way, 50 is perfectly centrist. Well, the the big joke is just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not trying to get you. <laughs> I, mean, right. uh, do, I mean, do you think there's a conscious uh, attempt by these guys to slant the news and, and, and move the electorate, or are they um, just passionate in defense of their views? I, I think for the most part, no. I think yeah. that it is, uh, some of it is even unconscious. Um, mm -hmm. uh, some of it even just that uh, it has to do with the circles they move in. Yeah. So a newsroom is just almost completely liberal. So even the conservatives will not interact with other conservatives that much, though so they won't get the perspectives and facts and knowledge that conservatives know. And, and, and that's a big part of it. <laughs> that famous Washington Post, when we had, we shut the switchboard of the Capitol down on the uh, Clarence Thomas uh, nomination. And the Washington Post said that, quote, the followers of Pat Roberts and followers, not audience, <laughs> followers, are poor, uneducated, and easy to command. And when he was challenged on it, he said, well, everybody knows that. Yeah, and that's everybody, right. who is yeah. everybody? You know, I have a chapter on that about the way people treat the media, uh, excuse me, treat the military. Yeah. And I, I just write about, I grew up in small town Arkansas and knew lots of people who went into the military. Meanwhile, most of my political science colleagues, who are liberal like in a mm -hmm. newsroom, had no friends from high school join the military. And when I hear people talk about the people in the military going to the military only because they couldn't get another job, I said, yeah. That wasn't true at all. You know, mm -hmm. I knew lots of these guys. And, and so, you know, the last chapter of the book is just uh, I would urge liberal journalists just to, to get out and interact with conservatives more. Well, this is great. Well, you're, you're this is, I'm sure you've been pilloried by uh, Meter Matters and some of those oh, groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tim Gross Close. It's called Left Turn. Where you a fetching red cover. It's available, yes, in bookstores everywhere? All, all around, yes. All Amazon, around. Bookstores Amazon, and... wherever books are. You ought to get a copy and see what's going on. Tim, thank you so much for thank being you, with Pat. us. Appreciate Pat. it. Terry. Well, up next, an accident turned a young man into an addict.
They got me up to 19 different medications that I was taking every single day. So I would beg God on a daily basis to take me off of this planet. The night he almost died after this. Hi there, neighbor. Pat Boone here for my good friends at Swiss America, the company that makes retirement dreams come true with gold. A lot of folks are shifting a portion of their retirement funds into a new precious metals IRA with Swiss America. And since 2004, these IRAs are up in value over 150%. I've been a very satisfied client of Swiss America for many years now because they believe in honesty, fair prices, and superior service. It's time to put your financial future on a gold standard right now. I own gold because it's a hedge of protection for my family. Even my grandkids can see that our paper money is becoming less valuable every day. So call or visit Swiss America now. Ask for the Pat Boone free DVD and gold IRA kit. Get the best education you can on gold, the best asset to own during these uncertain times. Call or visit online now. Now is a good time to get a new HD TV, but did you know you need more than a cool TV to see true HD? 30% of the people watching on high-def television are not watching high-def programming. Why would they do that? Because you need an HD provider. Dish Network is the leader in high-def. I'm gonna step up and check out Dish Network. It's the biggest deal in HD entertainment. Get HBO, Cinemax, Showtime, and Stars free for three months. Packages start at just $24.99 a month, and you'll get your HD channels absolutely free for life. Guess how much Dish Network charges you for HD? 50 bucks? 50 bucks? No, it's free. Free for life. Free's better. Free HD for life. How cool is that? That is very cool. I like free. I can afford free. Free for life. Free for life. Bring it. Call today and get over 30 premium movie channels free. And with Dish Network, get free HD for life. Free! Free. Bam. Cool. I think I gotta get some Dish Network. Awesome. How do I sign up? Gotta go with Dish. I want Dish Network. Let's watch TV. With Dish Network, get free HD for life. Call and switch to Dish Network today. To see this week's most viewed stories, go to CBN.com. When Sean Hughes was planning his honeymoon, he knew it would be the start of his married life. What he didn't know was that it would also be the beginning of a problem that would eventually take him to the psych ward five times and almost kill him. It seems that the more pain medicine I took for it, the worse the pain actually got. Sean Hughes's pain started when he injured his back riding a jet ski on his honeymoon. A doctor prescribed Percocet. After the honeymoon, Sean was still in pain, and another doctor wrote him a second prescription for pain medicine. There's actually a part in your brain that tells your body you need this substance, and if you don't give it to it, that part of your brain will cause your body to rebel against you. After taking that many pills, Sean started having anxiety attacks. It's very normal to have anxiety attacks when you're a pain patient because you begin to live in fear that you're gonna always suffer this pain. Instead of weaning Sean off the medicines, doctors added Xanax, a drug more addictive than the pain meds he was taking. The drugs affected Sean's performance at work. I would be so medicated that I would turn around to write on the board and start to actually go to sleep and just stand there. Um, so it was obvious something was wrong. But Sean was hooked, and for months, he made almost nightly trips to a hospital emergency room where he demanded more drugs. I remember specifically being in the emergency room with him and begging him not to take anything else, saying, you've had enough of your own medicine. You'll go home and you'll go right to sleep. Please believe me, you don't need to take anything else. And, um, and he was very angry. It became a battle between her and I, her trying to tell me and tell my doctors and tell the nurses, tell everyone that I should not take these medicines. And me literally being scared to death that someone might listen to her and take them away from me. Sean ended up in the hospital psych ward five times. Every single time I went into a mental hospital, I was diagnosed with more illnesses and eventually the list went on, generalized anxiety disorder, bipolar disorder, schizoaffective disorder, and they would add meds. 
until they got me up to 19 different medications that I was taking every single day. Sean began to look at death as a welcome option from the torment that his life had become. So in my mind, I had two options. Continue living a life where I am totally humiliated every day or go to heaven. So I would beg God on a daily basis to take me off of this planet. Sean finally agreed to go to an outpatient detox program and to go to counseling with his wife. But after a financial crisis where they lost their home and car, Sean went back to the ER to get more pain meds. Jessica was at the breaking point. Why don't you understand? Ah! I got in the closet with a pillow and I just cried, cried and cried and cried, Lord. You know, please let him see this. Let him see what is happening in our lives right now, God, please. Friends and family members urged Jessica to divorce Sean. I stayed with him because God told me to. But as soon as I was threatened physically, God told me to leave and not divorce. But God made it clear to me that I needed to go and seek safety. And I just felt like God gave me a glimpse that if I just hung in there and I just prayed fervently, that God was going to deliver him. In May of 2002, Sean was dying from the interaction of all the drugs in his system. He went into a six hour long seizure at the hospital that temporarily blinded him. I had the feeling of, I am dying and I am going to hell and it is too late. There is nothing that can be done about it now. Doctors called Jessica to the hospital convinced that Sean was dying. He's screaming and he's seizuring and it was pretty traumatic just to see what, what was happening to him. It just looked like a person completely battling demons that had been hanging over him for quite a while. And all we could do was just stand by and pray for him and just pray for healing. Sean made it through the night. He began to talk to God about his life. I finally made my peace with God and I admitted to God, none of this is your fault. I've been blaming you. I've been saying that, how could you allow this to happen to me? But the truth is, you warned me. There, there were points where I knew this is getting out of control. And instead of trusting you, I entrusted my life to the doctors and I entrusted my life to the pills and I destroyed my life and it's all my fault. None of it is your fault and I'm so sorry. Sean finally surrendered his addiction and his life to the Lord. The transformation that God made in my life starting that day, now it was nowhere near complete that day, but starting that day over the next several years, eventually it became very obvious to me that a miracle happened that day called the new birth. <laughs> and by God's grace, he opened my eyes and brought me to true repentance and caused me to become born again the day after I almost died. Sean has been drug free for five years. Today, he and Jessica have two children and their marriage is completely restored. Beyond the many miracles that he did, setting me free from drugs, healing my marriage, giving me a ministry, giving me children, it's the, the reality of eternity being placed at the forefront of my mind that I, I would look at as the greatest blessing. Where did things begin to change for Sean? You know, it was a long road that brought him to a place of near destruction. It began to change when he became painfully honest with himself where he could say to God, God, none of this is your fault. There were places along the way where I could have made a different decision. I don't know whether drugs is an issue that you're facing in your life today, but for all of us, there are places along the way, if we are listening, where God speaks to us. And many times we don't listen. Many times we take the easy road. Many times we don't want to face the thing in us that's causing some of the problem. Today, God wants to make a difference. He wants to make a change in your life and in your circumstance. Where does it begin? Well, you can't really let him do that until you're completely honest with yourself. That's the place of true surrender where you say, you know what, God, if I want all of you, then I have to let go of the part of me I've been hanging on to that's been taking your place that's been making poor choices, that's been allowing things to happen in my life that shouldn't be allowed. God's always there. He always, 
always has your best interest in mind. He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. He can do the impossible, the miraculous. But first, we have to come to the place of saying, I have come to the end of myself. I don't want me anymore. I want all of you, everything you have to offer. And I'm willing to do on my end whatever needs to be done so that there's room in my heart and my life for you. We need to get out of the way so God can be who he wants to be in our lives. This is true no matter what you're facing. It doesn't matter whether it's drugs, pornography, some kind of addiction to something else, maybe just stubbornness in a marriage scenario. Whatever it is, God is able to change it. The question is, will you get serious with him today? Will you really, really do business with him? He's here right now, wanting to make a difference in your circumstances. Let's just talk to him. Just let go. Say, okay, God, I get it. And right now, I'm surrendering everything, everything. Let's pray together. Well, God, I'm watching this man's story, and I realize that there are closed doors in my life that I've not let you in, closets where I've hidden things, and and yet all along I have allowed myself to feel like I'm the victim. I'm not the victim, God. But I am the object of your affection. I am your child. I am loved by you. And all this time you've waited while I've been hanging on to things, stuff, my own will, my own selfishness, the fear of really letting go and having to face inadequacies in myself. I am inadequate, God, in every way. I am a sinner in need of a savior. So Jesus, today I am saying to you, I know you died for my sin. Forgive me, I am so sorry. I want change in my life, I want you. I don't want change for the sake of change. I want change because you come into the middle of my circumstance. Come in, please, Lord Jesus. Be the Lord of my life. Change the way that I think. Give me understanding of how I'm to live with you and for you. Open my eyes up to who you are and the ears of my heart so I can hear you when you speak to me. Bring back to life the thing in me that recognizes you and that recognizes my need, the thing that I've stuffed down and tried to quiet and subdue and hide. Resurrect me today, Lord Jesus. Redeem me. Give me new life and a fresh beginning, not because I have earned it, but because you are a compassionate, grace-filled, merciful, loving God. I want to live with you and for you. And I ask this today in the precious name of Jesus. If you have prayed that prayer, then the God that we have just prayed to, who loves you more than you can imagine, wants to begin a great work in your life. What do you do? How do you help that work to continue, to happen, to, to sprout, to grow? Well, we've put some material together to help a little bit of your journey. It's called A New Day, and it was put together with you in mind. There's information in here from the Word of God. This is absolutely free. We just want you to have it so you can move forward. If you'd like to get a hold of a new day, which is what you're about to experience, call that toll-free number that's on your screen, 1-800-759-0700. Just say, I prayed that prayer, and I'd like the new day packet. We will send this out to you right away. God has a plan and a purpose for your life, and you don't want to miss a second of it. We're going to be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Coming up later... Nothing will be impossible to you. The secret to miracles. Mountain move, debt go out of the way, marriage be restored. Lies in your mouth. You speak it. The law of miracles from the secret kingdom. Whatever it is that is on your heart, you say it. Brenda, you gotta see the video I saw in the 700 Club. I pray God will do the same awesome work in your life. Go to CBN.com to I Saw It on the 700 Club for a fast, easy way to see and share your favorite videos. My name is Roger Stump, and I'm a cancer survivor. The surgeon said it's inoperable. 
It's already in your liver. My wife, Brenda, sat there and cried. And I'm thinking, I can't die right now. I'm only 52 years old. I was so distraught. I've heard Cancer Treatment Centers of America had experience with pancreatic cancers. It was like night and day. The hospital just breeds an environment of hope. You'd get a CT scan, and the next morning, the results were read to you. We'd go up there. I just knew it was going to be a good result. You could just see the joy on Dr. Granick's face. Call now, and we'll show you how the most compassionate people anywhere put you at the center of everything we do. Together, we'll explore real treatment options you may not even know exist. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is such a different place because they give you hope. I would strongly urge you to call them and, and get a second opinion. Please call today. If you're over 50, getting life insurance can be tough. How can you get the coverage you need at a price you can afford? I have good news. With AARP Level Benefit Term Life from New York Life Insurance Company, you can apply for up to $50,000 in affordable term life insurance without a medical exam. That's right. Your acceptance is based on your answers to three simple health questions, and most who apply are accepted. Underwritten by New York Life, this coverage is affordable and can be easy to get. And it's the only life insurance program endorsed by AARP. If you're an AARP member between 50 and 74, call New York Life now to receive free information by mail, plus a rate quote. Not an AARP member? We'll tell you how to join. Call New York Life at 1-800-916-1773 for free information by mail. You'll also receive this free gift just for calling. That's 1-800-916-1773. Certificate benefits and limitations should be carefully examined prior to purchase. And welcome back to the 700 Club. The U.S. Senate rejected him as a nominee to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, but now California Governor Jerry Brown wants to put Goodwin Liu on the California Supreme Court. The former clerk for Supreme Court uh, Justice Ruth Ginsburg is well known for his radical views. The American Center for Law and Justice Jordan Seculo says Liu would legislate from the bench. Quote, Goodwin Liu is a judicial activist who, judging from his writings, would bend the constitutional text to serve his policy goals. As a member of the California High Court, Lou could still be a possible candidate for the Supreme Court. Well, CBN World Reach programming is touching lives in Cameroon. A new survey shows encouraging statistics from the West African nation. 75% of all Cameroonians are aware of CBN programs, and 47% actually watched last year. Both English and French language CBN World Reach programming airs in Cameroon. More than 3 million people say that the shows have helped them accept Christ or encourage them to join a local church. And you can find out more about CBN World Reach by logging on to CBN.com slash World Reach. Pat and Terry will be back with more right after this. Tomorrow, that was always rejected. His father didn't want him and his gang forgot him. Everything they ever talk about is a lie. It's not true. A felon finds freedom behind bars. I said, man, where do I sign my name? Plus, former governor and presidential hopeful Mike Huckabee and the day that changed America forever. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. Do you need a miracle in your marriage, healing in your physical body, or maybe a financial breakthrough? Well, nothing is impossible when you understand how the law of miracles works. Pat explains it in this segment from The Secret Kingdom. Miracles. What is a miracle? How do you have a miracle? Well, if you want to look at a definition, a miracle is a suspension of what seem to be the natural laws to bring about another result. And you can look at all kinds of things and say this is miraculous. An example of Jesus, and he did many miracles, he and his disciples had been over on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. He walked down into what's called the Kidron Valley. It's not very deep. I've walked there up and down those things. It's, it's not a big place. 
and you go down into this little ravine, and then you go up a hill that's called the Mount of Olives. So he went up there with his disciples to a little town on the other side of the Mount of Olives, and there he spent the night, then he came out the next morning. And the Bible says that he was hungry. And so he saw a fig tree that looked like it was in leaf and bearing figs. So he went over to it, and there were no figs, no fruit. And so he said to this fig tree, let no man ever eat fruit from you again. Then he went down the hill, up the other side, into what we know as the Temple Mount, because the Temple was up on the other side. The Mount of Olives, one side, Kidron Valley, then up the mountain. It's, it's not a big, big place. It's not like you're climbing uh, the Rockies. It's just a, you know, a hill. So he got up there, and he found this terrible stuff going on. He found people selling sick pigeons and hawking uh, temple coins and doing all kinds of things. Well, he was enraged. And he says, it's written that, that my father's house should be called a house of prayer, and you've made it into a den of thieves. So he smashed open the cages where these, these birds were. He overturned the tables of the money changers. You can see just total chaos. Then he got a whip uh, together and started beating them, and driving them out of the temple. Then they went back up to the Mount of Olives, spent the night, came out the next day. Well, they passed by this little tree, this fig tree. The little thing had shriveled up at its roots. It was totally dead. And Peter wanted to call attention to it. And he says, Master, the fig tree that you cursed is dead. And along with that was kind of like, how did you do it? And so Jesus didn't say, well, what do you want to know, Peter? He just started teaching. And he said, have faith in God. Have faith in God. And whoever says, says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, shall have the thing that he says. Now, that's the principle of miracles right there. Have faith in God. You don't have faith in doctors. You don't have faith in medicine. You don't have faith in yourself. You don't have faith in your money. You don't have faith in all of your natural abilities. You have faith in God, who is the author of all life, who is almighty and all-powerful, who can do anything. And you have faith in Him. And then you are in the presence of God, and you behold His glory, and you're in a state of being born again. And you look up into the face of God, and you say, God, what do you want? And He speaks to you. He will speak and communicate with your spirit. And then you say, in the name of Jesus, I curse you, fig tree, mountain move, debt go out of the way, marriage be restored, whatever it is that is on your heart. You say it. You speak it with your mouth. Now, here's how it works. There's so much to talk about in so little time. But the principle of power comes from this. It comes from God, who is the eternal mind. God speaks to His Spirit. The Spirit speaks to your spirit. Your spirit speaks to your mind. Your mind speaks to your mouth. Your mouth speaks to the created universe around you. So you speak to devils. You speak to disease. You speak to poverty. You speak to famine. You speak to the storms. You speak in the name of the Lord. But it comes by having the Word of God energized in your mouth because you've been in His presence, and you have beheld His glory, and you've listened to His voice, and you're speaking the word that He says. Reinhard Bonnke said the Lord spoke to him. He said, my word in your mouth is as powerful as my word in my mouth. Now, that's a pretty heavy thing, but that's the way it is. 
And Jesus said, there's nothing impossible. Nothing will be impossible to you. And he says, greater works will you do than I do because I'm going to my Father. Now, this is the principle and the law of miracles. Now, there's one other thing about miracles that you should understand. He said, now, when you stand praying, if you have aught against any, forgive, that your heavenly Father might forgive you. I remember some years ago, I was asked to speak to a conference in Singapore. And it was a nice group of Chinese people, Christians. And when I came out of the break, there was this little lady there that said, look, I've got arthritis, and I ask you to pray for me. So I said, sure. So I laid hands on her and prayed in the name of Jesus, be healed. How do you feel? Still got arthritis. Oh, okay. So I said, let's pray again. So I prayed again. I said, How do you feel? I still got arthritis, still, still hurt. And then I said, let me ask you something. She said, what's that? I said, are you angry with anybody? Do you have some resentment in your heart? And she thought, she says, oh, no. She said, I love everybody. And I said, you do? She said, oh, yes, I don't hate anybody. And I said, well, how about your husband? She said, well, oh, I hate him, but he doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, you got to count your husband or your wife or your kids or your parents. You can't say, well, it's a family matter if you have resentment in your heart. And so Jesus said, in order to be in that condition of being born again, you have to be in a position of being forgiven. And in order to be in the condition of being forgiven, you have to be willing to forgive others. Those who have offended you, if you want to have miracles and you want to be in the presence of God, you have to be able and willing to forgive. So it's hard to do. Yes, it is hard to do. But you need to, first of all, if it's hard to forgive them, then start asking for a blessing when you pray. I ask God to bless them. Whoever has offended you, ask God to bless them. Because this is the key. This is the thing that will, will lock up the power of God. And this is the thing that will open the floodgates of His presence. Have faith in God. And the next thing is, speak with your mouth. Having listened to Him, been in His presence, then say what you want. Command the mountain to move. Command the disease to leave. Command demons to leave you. Command. Speak in the name of Jesus. Because He said, the next thing is, don't doubt in your heart. You know how the Bible says, if two of you agree on earth as touching anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father which is in heaven. There has to be agreement. Well, what is the agreement? Well, the agreement is with the Holy Spirit, with your spirit. And you don't doubt in your heart, in your inner man, you don't say to the Spirit of God, I don't really believe this, because then you don't have agreement. The Spirit of God is saying, I want to heal you. I am healing you. And you say, Amen, Amen. In the name of Jesus, I am healed. But if you say, oh, no, the doctor told me that I, I'm going to have an incurable disease. I can't get healed. Okay, you don't doubt in your heart. Jesus said, you don't doubt in your heart. And if you don't doubt in your heart, you will have the thing that you say. So speak it in Jesus' name. Biblical principles that can change your life. We're going to bring you more from the secret, secret Kingdom in weeks to come. If you'd like to watch any of the previous segments or share them with your friends, you can log on to CBN.com and find them there. Amazing. Those principles are the Lord showed me over a period of about five years. They're immutable truths. Mm -hmm. Change your life. Well, like many single mothers, Ida Cordero, excuse me, Ida Cordero struggled to make ends meet, but she had never gone into debt or missed paying her bills. Here's Ida's wonderful secret. As a single mom, Ida Cadero always managed to stretch her paycheck to take care of her family, and she never went into debt. Being a single mom is very hard, especially when you, it's just one income, two children. I always gave my tithe. You know, I always gave my tithe from the beginning, thank God. I said I've always been faithful with that. You know, there were times when I would give my tithe, pay all my bills, and then the only thing that I had was a certain amount of money to make it to the next check with, for food. 
So I get on my knees. I said, Lord, this is what I have. Help me to make it. And I would. He provides not only for, for you, but he provides for your children. Ida also started giving $20 a month to CBN. I've been watching CBN about 10 years now. I really believe in everybody there, and I love the way they help others. And so it, God has just touched me in my heart to give to CBN. Ida increased her pledge, and she was recently promoted to supervisor at her job. I know that prospering in my career has been because I've been faithful with the tithing. If you can trust the Lord to be your savior, you certainly can trust him to be your provider. Ida has the secret. And ladies and gentlemen, if you want to enter into that secret, I ask you to take an adventure of faith. Start small if you want to. 65 cents a day is not exactly a you know, budget buster, uh, but that's what, that's what half of what you spend on a can of soda pop on a vending machine. So <clears throat> we're not talking about big money, but I tell you what happens when millions of people get together, you can change the world. So call in and say you can count on me. And for those who join our 700 Club, I've got something called Life Beyond the Grave. We've mentioned this before, the series we did on people who had died, either went to heaven or hell, came back to tell about it. It's fascinating, real life stories, and these will be there for you. So call so you can count on me. Quickly, a little one or two questions. Inbox question. Pat, Inbox. this is from Tony who says, Pat, last week you answered a question with maybe you weren't praying right. Are you saying there's a wrong way to pray? Oh, uh, not necessarily a wrong way to pray, but yes, it is. Uh, you know, as I, uh, if you watch that uh, series, that uh, teaching on miracles, um, uh, you need to stop asking. You need to start declaring. I mean, the way you do it, you must hear God. You must be in such close contact with the Father, and then His Word comes through you, and you speak it forth to the disease, to the sickness, to whatever. And instead of pleading, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, you start saying, you know, do yes. it. Mm -hmm. And the other way, of course, I mentioned, if you have uh, ought in your heart against anybody else, uh, you'll find that your prayer is being blocked. Yeah. Is there another? Yes, this is Heather who says, Pat, I've struggled many years with keeping my time with God. Why do I struggle with this, and how can I stay more dedicated? Uh, the Bible says, early will I seek thee. And, uh, you know, it's so easy when you start the day. You, you flip all the radio, so they're playing uh, rock music, or they're playing whatever they're playing. Or you watch the television and you're looking at the news or you're seeing good morning somebody or other. And, you know, your mind is focused on that. Or if you have an iPod today, you can punch in that and all of a sudden you're looking, looking, looking. So your mind is focused on something else. You have to start the day. Early will I seek thee. Start the day with the Lord. Then the rest of it will kind of work itself out. But that's how, that's how you do it. And there is no substitute. You, know, you say, well, you know, I don't eat breakfast, so I've got to, uh, you know, how do I start eating breakfast? Well, sit down and eat your breakfast. That's how you do it. Well, tomorrow, our good friend Mike Huckabee joins us. And today, we leave you with the words of Jesus from John 6. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. That's all the time we've got. Thank you so much for being with us, and for our staff here at CBN, and all of us on the 700 Club. This is Pat Robertson. Goodbye. God bless you. at an incredible pace. People everywhere rushing to their destinations, but there's a destiny that awaits each one of us, and all of us will face life's ultimate question, where will I spend eternity? In his new DVD, Life Beyond the Grave, Pat Robertson introduces you to real people with remarkable stories of heaven and riveting accounts of hell. You'll learn what the Bible has to say about life after death. The Bible tells us that eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor mind conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. Life Beyond the Grave will build your faith as God's promises come alive, prepare you to face your eternity, and provide you with a powerful witnessing tool to share with your loved ones. I want you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that your destiny is sealed forever in heaven.